boy, you want some? Or we'll cut you, boy. Hey everyone, there's a new open source AI tool making waves called OmniGen2, and it has arrived with some incredibly bold claims. On paper, it's being presented as the open source answer to the powerful closed model image tools from giants like OpenAI, promising everything from high fidelity image generation to flawless editing, and most importantly, perfect character consistency. The developers have released a series of truly impressive examples that suggest this tool could be a genuine game changer. But does it actually live up to the hype when you take it for a spin yourself? In this video, we're going to look at the incredible promise of OmniGen 2 by examining their official examples, and then we'll put it to the test to see what the reality is. Let's dig in. So, what makes the idea of OmniGen 2 so exciting? It's designed as a unified multimodal model. That means it's built to handle text-to-image generation, complex image editing, and even blending subjects from different photos into a single, cohesive scene. The architecture behind it is a 3 billion parameter vision language model paired with a 4 billion parameter diffusion model. This setup is supposed to allow it to understand text and image inputs with incredible nuance. The biggest claim and the one that caught my eye is its supposed mastery of character consistency. Anyone who has used AI image tools knows how difficult it is to get the same character into different scenes. OmniGen 2 claims to have cracked this, using a single reference image to regenerate a subject in new context while keeping their features identical. To back this up, the developers have provided a gallery of showcase images. Let's walk through them. First, the basics. Text to image. They start with a prompt for a cat with a crown lounging on a velvet throne. The result they show is fantastic. The image is crisp, the lighting is dramatic, and the detail on the cat's fur is impeccable. They also demonstrate artistic versatility with a dark wizard conjuring a spell in an ancient cave, which produces a moody, stylized image that looks like concept art. But they push the detail even further. Look at this one, based on a very complex prompt. The sun rises, slightly. The dew on the rose petal in the garden is clear. A crystal ladybug is crawling to the dew. The background is the early morning garden macro lens. The resulting image is simply stunning. The focus, the depth of field, the tiny details on the ladybug. It's presented as a perfect generation. They even showcase its ability to follow creative concepts like a rabbit made out of vegetables. The demos for image editing are where the claims get even more ambitious. The key here isn't just what it can change, but what it doesn't change. They take a cartoon character in a yellow dress and give the simple command, change the dress to blue. In the after shot, the dress is blue, but the character's pose, expression, and the background are absolutely identical. They take another character and prompt, raise the hand. And just the hand is raised. Everything else is frozen in place. This theme of precise control continues. They replace a sword with a hammer, and the character's grip and posture remain consistent. They add a fisherman's hat to a woman's head, and it fits perfectly without altering her face or hair. This all builds towards their main selling point, character consistency. They show a realistic portrait of a man and give the prompt, make him smile. In the before and after shot, the change is subtle but perfect. His hair, beard, shirt, and the background are pixel-perfect identical. The only thing that has changed is his expression. If this works reliably, it's the holy grail of AI image editing. Finally, they demonstrate what they call in-context generation, which is the most complex feature. They merge two different anime characters into a wedding scene. The resulting bride and groom look exactly like the source characters, just in different outfits and a new setting. They take a photo of a bird and another of a desk. The prompt is to place the bird on the desk. The result is seamless. The bird is there, correctly scaled, with a physically accurate shadow beneath it. They present it as almost impossible to tell that it's AI-generated. They place a realistic man and woman together with the prompt, let the man from image 1 and the woman from image 2 kiss and hug. In their demo, the resulting couple looks exactly like the people in the source images. They even show an image of Elon Musk. The prompt, let the man appear in front of the White House delivering a speech, generates an image of him at a podium. In a very complex example, they combine a realistic man and an anime girl into a wedding scene, preserving their individual art styles. So, after seeing all that, you'd think this is the most advanced open source model ever created. The demos are flawless, but are they a true representation of the tool? To find out, I went straight to the official Hugging Face demo links provided on their GitHub page. They provide several Gradio demos, and I jumped into one to run my own tests. 
The interface lets you upload up to three images, write a prompt, and adjust settings. First, I uploaded a very old, faded black and white photo that was barely visible. My prompt was, restore this image in a colorized, modern look. The result wasn't great. I tweaked the prompt to restore this image in a realistic look. The second result was better, but honestly, not very impressive given the poor quality of the input. In a previous video, I got a much better restoration from this same old photo using a different tool called Flux Context. So, for restoration, OmniGen 2 is not the best. Now for the big one, character consistency. I uploaded a picture of Elon Musk and a picture of Sam Altman. My prompt was, the man in image 1 and the man in image 2 are both having fun at a busy beach. And here's the result. As you can see, the faces are completely different. These are not Elon Musk and Sam Altman. They are two generic men on a beach. In fact, if you look closely, there are classic AI flaws like a double finger on one of the hands. This immediately told me that the official examples must be heavily peri-chicked. I tried again. I uploaded the image of Elon Musk and a picture of a female model. My prompt was, the man in image one and woman in image are both getting married in a wedding hall. The result was the same story. The setting was a wedding hall, but the man and woman were completely different people. The man bore a slight resemblance to Elon but was clearly not him and the female model was totally changed. Practically speaking, the consistency feature failed. The developers claimed the model could handle virtual triumphs, so I uploaded a picture of a model and a separate image of a bra and panties. My prompt was, the woman in image 1 is wearing the bra and panties on the image 2, standing in a busy street. The result was a total failure. First, the woman's face was completely changed. Second, she was wearing a different set of lingerie, not the one I provided in the second image. I tried again changing the clothing to a full dress and rerunning the prompt. The same thing happened. The model generated a random dress completely ignoring the one from my input image. The virtual try-on feature appears to be completely useless. Just to be sure, I tried the Elon and Sam test again, but this time I used their names in the prompt. Elon Musk and Sam Altman are both having fun on the busy beach. The result was no better. The output image was of two completely different people. Based on this, my conclusion is that the examples shown on the project page are pure deception. In real-life testing, the model completely failed to perform any of the advanced tasks it claims to master. I wanted to do more tests, but after these initial failures, there was no point. So this brings us to a confusing place. The developers state that OmniGen 2 achieves state-of-the-art results on benchmarks like Geneval, sometimes outperforming models like Stable Diffusion 3. They also claim it scores as high as top models like ControlNet for controllable generation. This raises a big question. Why is there such a massive gap between these reported benchmark scores and the tool's performance in practical real-world scenarios? Under the hood, the architecture seems sound, using a frozen vision language model, QN 2.5, for understanding and a diffusion model for generating. But something is clearly getting lost in translation. If you still want to try it yourself, the model and code are fully open source. You can find the weights on Hugging Face and the code on GitHub. You'll need a powerful GPU with at least 16 gigabytes of VRAM to run it locally. The developers have also said comfy UI support is on the roadmap. So, what's my final verdict on OmniGen 2? It's a project with enormous ambition, backed by some of the most impressive-looking demo images I've ever seen. The open-source spirit behind it is fantastic. However, in its current state, based on my hands-on testing, the tool simply does not work as advertised. The gap between the cherry-picked examples and the real-world output is staggering. Its most important claims, especially around character consistency, fall apart under the slightest scrutiny. This was an honest review of OmniGen 2, a story of incredible promise meeting a very disappointing reality. For now, this tool needs a lot more work and maturity before it's ready for prime time. If you want to experiment, the links are in the description, but I would not recommend it for any serious work just yet. Let me know what you think in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for more honest deep dives into the latest AI tools.